Hi, this is Gary Brinkman, Pioneer Agronomist in Central Michigan. Today I'd like to see what we can learn from several fields struggling to make it through a thick crust. Other than being rather cold, soil conditions were really quite ideal when much of the Michigan corn and soybean crop was planted this year. Just recently, however, we've had some very heavy rain that is likely to cause some soil crusting and may hamper uniform emergence. Now, in many cases, corn will push through the crust and establish adequate stands. But in some cases, the soil crust is so thick that corn and soybeans may need help. In this example, heavy rains caused a crust that was close to three quarters of an inch thick. You can see that by the top section of the soil. Below it, the soil was still very loose and friable. Now there are a number of management actions a grower can take to help struggling seed get out of the ground. The most common practice is to use a rotary hoe. Here are several things to consider if you have to use a rotary hoe. Number one, some seedling damage is inevitable. Number two, start with a strip test and end with a strip test. So after I start with my strip test, I'll get off my planter, I'll assess how much damage is taking place, and I'll determine whether I need to proceed. And then at the end, I want to leave a strip test where I have a chance to determine whether or not my rotary hoe was actually effective by actually taking it to yield. Now, soybeans are more sensitive to a rotary hoe damage, especially at the crook and seedling stage, so it would be more cautious when rotary hoeing soybeans. The key is to minimize crop damage and maximize emergence. So again, get off the tractor frequently and assess the level of crop damage when you're utilizing a rotary hoe. Now in this case, the advantage goes to the rotary hoe. The plant on the left was helped out of the ground with the rotary hoe. The plant on the right was in the strip where we did not use the rotary hoe. And you can see it was struggling to get out of the ground. In the end, there was much less stand in the strip that was not rotary hoed. I'm not sure this plant would have made it out of the ground and through that th thick crust without the help of the rotary hoe. So, in this case, the rotary hoe was very helpful in establishing an acceptable stand. Now let's walk two more fields that brought a different outcome. These two fields were just down the road from each other, both with very thick crusts preventing corn emergence. The picture you see here is the first field. In this case, the grower tried to break up the crust with the rotary hoe, but it was just too thick for a rotary hoe to be useful. In this case, the rotary hoe flipped the soil clod upside down, exposing the kernel to the open air. We walked this field over the course of several days, and it was clear that it would not have an adequate stand. So in this case, this field was replanted. The second field, as I say, just down the road, also had a thick crust. But in this case, the grower used his planter to break open the crust. Using RTK and his auto steer, the grower ran the double disc opener an inch or two from the, to the side of the row. We came back about a week later and found that the plants were emerging nicely. This picture gives a better view of how effective the planter was in breaking open the crust, making it possible to establish adequate stands in this 20-inch row field. As you can see, it established an adequate stand, not quite as uniform as I'd like, but in the end, these two field scenarios demonstrate that there are several ways we can effectively help our crops emerge through a thick crust. In one case, the rotary hoe was the perfect tool. In the second case, the grower was able to use the amazing tools of precision ag to help overcome a crusted soil. I hope you enjoyed this field adventure. This has been Gary Brinkman, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Central Michigan. 
Have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.